My name is Jack, and today is October 30th. I have great plans today. Today I'm going to meet with my friends to pick a pumpkin to carve. Is there anything better than Halloween? I mean, I'm asking you seriously. Because Halloween is just the best holiday when you're a teen. Not because of the pumpkin carving specifically, but because of the candy, because of the thrill and the night I could spend watching horror movies that I'm not even allowed to look at when I'm at home. My friends and I have this whole thing planned out already. First things first. I had to clear things up with my mom. I was going to spend the night at Dave's place, and on the 31st, we'd spend the day together before walking door to door for our candies. Now, my mom said I was getting a little bit old to go on a Halloween run and said to leave the candies to the little kids. But I promised my mom it would be the last year. I always thought it was funny how I was too old for this, but not old enough to watch horror movies. Uh, to me, I don't know, it just didn't make sense. Am I old or not? If 14 is too old to go on a candy run then why wasn't I old enough to watch horror movies? <laughs> anyway, parents, am I right? After an hour of deliberation, my mom finally released me. I picked up my bike and I rode about 20 minutes to reach my friends, who were all mad at me because I'm late. Not that late, of course, but again, I'm the last one at the park because it took my mom longer to convince. We then ride to Old Mac's farm to pick our pumpkins. We could have gone to the nearest big brand grocery store, but Mac always gives gifts to whoever buys from him. Last year, I received a bag with about 30 miniature chocolate bars. You know, the kind you find in the dollar store. It's slowly becoming a tradition for us to pick our pumpkin at Matt's. And plus, they're usually larger and easier to work with for carving. Those at the grocery store are sometimes as small as the palm of my hand, and their skin is so hard to break, and your design is like 100% assured to look like shit. Macs are hard still, but a little less thick, which makes them easier to pierce. However, Macs are also heavier. I don't know what they're full of. Uh, pumpkin meat? Gonna call it like it is. They're meaty. Dave's mom always makes sure we put everything in a big pot so she can make pumpkin pies and other stuff like that. As I walk through Mac's pumpkin patch and I stare at this year's harvest, they're just as big as expected but maybe a little too big to carry on my bike. I do have great balance and don't mind carrying a bag on a handle but most of these are easily 10 pounds, maybe even more. And I'm not sure they even fit my backpack. Mostly, I want one that doesn't look too deformed, as round as possible so it's easier to carve. I'm not as talented as my friend Serge. I mean, this guy could pick out the worst looking pumpkin and make a work of art with it. He's so talented, that makes me a little bit jealous, but I beat him in every sport though, so it's okay. I mean, everyone has their talent. I can't do math, and I'm not good with creative work, but I'm good at sports, remembering dates and video games. After about 15 minutes of looking around, I finally find the perfect pumpkin. It's round, the lines on it are straight and perfect, and there's barely any imperfection. This pumpkin looks like a cartoon drawing. It's perfect, and the unblemished, relatively smooth surface tells me it's also going to be easy to draw my guidelines on it. It's good. Before any of my friends can see it, I pick it up. It's heavier than expected. Way heavier. This one was over 10 pounds, which is surprising because I tried to lift a bigger one earlier, and it felt lighter than this one. Never mind. I, I throw it into my backpack, and it barely fits. I can't zip it, but it'll hopefully hold long enough that I could reach Dave's house. Looking around, I find that most of my friends had made their way back to Max to pay for their pumpkin. I pick up my wallet and do the same, but realize Serge is still looking for a pumpkin. Poking fun at him, I tell him to pick whatever pumpkin since he's going to make it look good anyway. 
He asks my opinion and shows me two pumpkins. One has clearly lost the pumpkin beauty contest. It was full of holes. It looks a bit dried up and it has a weird shape. Closer to a peanut than an actual pumpkin. Not a first choice. The second one though. I could see why he's interested in it. It's a regular pumpkin, but there's a tiny pumpkin attached to it. Kind of like a second pumpkin grew on the first one. I'm pretty sure he could do great with this two-headed pumpkin, and so I tell him my opinion. Plus, the one with holes in it probably isn't edible anymore, and Dave's mom definitely won't like it. He agrees with me, and we all end up at the cash register paying for our pumpkins. Dave starts telling us a joke as we pick our bikes, but my phone rings and I have to step aside. Unsurprisingly, it's my mother. For a second, well, I didn't debate answering. No, scratch that for less than a second. If I didn't reply, she would end up whooping my ass to the next Halloween. I better not try it. So I answer my phone and all I hear is a string of curses coming out of every angry mom. I drop my bike to the ground and move aside so my friends don't have to hear that. And then I try to calm her down. I finally pick up what she's telling me. Something about me playing Fortnite all night and not doing my room. You know, cleaning it. When she finally stops to breathe, I tell her that I'll do it tomorrow when I'm back. And that I'm sorry for playing a good part of the night, but there was a new patch and I just had to play the game. Plus, it was Friday night. So why does it matter if I played all night? It's not like I had school the next day. Well, apparently, that was a big mistake. I'm arrogant or insolent. I'm not sure which one she uses because they're both interchangeable. My mom calls me home and I have to tell my friends that I won't be able to be there tonight for the horror night. And I feel a pit in my throat and my mood is shot. I was looking forward to this. I had been looking forward to this for the past uh, 10 or 15 days. I bit the inside of my cheek as I tell her that I'm coming home, just to give me time to ride back. Sorry guys, I got a jet. My mom wants me home. I hear their complaints for about 10 seconds before they see how dead I am inside through my eyes. I can't fight her. She's my mom. And even if we had planned this night a whole year ahead, her word is the law. I can't wait to be 18 to get out. It's not like my dad ever takes my defense anyway. And disobeying her orders is out of the question if I want to keep whatever privacy I have. At least she doesn't check my computer history or my phone, so <laughs> that's that. I don't have much room for activities outside the home if there's no adult around. And yet... They're okay leaving me alone when they go for their Saturday dinners. The ride back home is slow, and sad, and painful. I'm getting angrier by the second. It even feels like the pumpkin I'm carrying is heavier than when I bought it. But it's probably because I'm getting mad. When I reach home, I don't even care about putting my bike in the garage. I toss it in the front lawn behind the tall bushes and get inside. I want her to know I'm angry before I could see her angry, and when our eyes finally meet, it explodes. I tell her I had plans and that she's suffocating me, that I have the right to have free time and hobbies. She yells at me that my hobbies shouldn't shave away at my sleep schedule, and that just like any normal human being, I should keep my room clean. An untidy room is an untidy life. She likes to get that one out. She says she's trying to teach me a responsibility, but really, all she wants is to make sure I have no fun. Ever. As she says, go to your room and clean that up, I scream. You don't need to tell me that's where I'm going. As soon as I am in my room, well, I throw my bag on the floor and kick a pile of discarded shirts away. About two in the afternoon. 
I know my friends are all back at Dave's carving pumpkins, laughing and probably drinking some good smoothies Dave's mom made for them. I glance at my room and sigh angrily. Okay. I admit it, my room's a disaster. It's a fucking mess. There are clothes all over the floor, and there are two or three glasses on my desk as well as plates and utensils that, well, probably have been there for three or four days that I forgot to bring back to the kitchen. There's also a pile of homework school books and a pencil case on the floor next to my bed. Thinking I'm smart, I shove everything in the closet and start playing on my phone. I wait for about an hour and then I go down with the dirty dishes to tell my mom I'm done and ask her if I could go to Dave's to resume my previous plans. She softens up a little, tells me she doesn't want to restrict me and asks me to clean my dishes while she checks my room. You know... If I was smart, this would have been the moment to tell her I should be doing another round too before her and try to make some sense of my closet before she sees the papers and dirty clothes I just shoved in there. But instead, I cross my fingers that she's only going to open the door, see that the floor is clean, and take that as an honest effort on my part. But it wasn't enough. I start doing the dishes, but I'm not even done with the first plate, and she comes back down, angry. And now, I'm barred from leaving the home today. She tells me I need to clean my room and not to stuff everything in the closet. This means I have to do my own laundry, clean the dust off the shelves, vacuum, everything. Of course, not until I'm done with the dishes. By the time I'm done, it's already 5.30 at night and my stomach is grumbling heavily. Mom and Dad are about to go out to their weekly Saturday outing, and she tells me there's spaghetti and meatballs in the fridge, a leftover from yesterday. I want to complain that I don't want to eat that, but my complaints would fall onto deaf ears. I ask her if I could go to my friends, to which she replied, No because I lied to her and that my actions have consequences. And she tells me that I could carve my pumpkin at home and that I could show my friends tomorrow, and also specify that I need to clean any mess I make if there's any. She leaves and I eat dinner alone. When I'm done, I clean my dishes and fetch my pumpkin. I'm still in a mood, so I go into the living room. I put Pinky in the brain on the background TV. Install a towel on the floor so that the pumpkin juices don't soak the carpet, and then I get a big knife from the kitchen. I also pick a big black marker in a wet towel. After about 20 minutes of doodling random designs, I finally find one that I want to stick with. It's simple, but it gets the Halloween point across pretty well. Jigsaw pumpkin it is. I'm a little less miffed but still definitely angry that I couldn't do that with my friends this afternoon. So, without any further ado, I stab the pumpkin right next to its stem. I'm surprised at how thick it is. Uh, plus, it felt like I stabbed through two layers of skin. I snicker as the thought of my pumpkin being pregnant with another pumpkin crossed my mind. Why not? If Serge should find a two-headed pumpkin... Why would it be impossible for me to have a pumpkin inside my pumpkin? Two for the price of one. But then, a pungent smell reaches my nose and my eyes peel away from the cartoons. When I look down at my pumpkin, there's something thick and black oozing from the hole I just stabbed in. It smells awful. I don't even know how to describe it. It's like scraping the bottom of a garbage truck to get the most foul-smelling gunk ever. I heave a little and take a step back, then lift the pumpkin with the towel to move to the kitchen. I don't want that stuff in the carpet or the house is going to be smelling like crap for months, and my mom definitely wouldn't forgive me. Maybe the inside's all rotten. I stab another time, and this time... Start moving my knife around to draw a circle around the stem. It's super hard to move my knife around, and there's a lot of scratching noise. I feel like I'm scraping my knife against the biggest pumpkin seed ever. 
And even worse, it feels like the seed in the middle of an avocado. Once I have cut enough to take the stem away, I look inside. I see nothing but black. The smell is so intense, I have to cover my nose and my shirt, and even that doesn't do much. The smell is so strong, it's palpable. I can taste it. I lift the pumpkin and move it left and right a little, and the black liquid sloshes about. And I could see there's something in the liquid. So I moved to the sink and turned the pumpkin upside down so that the liquid could go down the drain. Once it's done, I turn the pumpkin around and look inside. I drop the pumpkin to the ground, and it explodes to pieces. In the middle of the pumpkin carnage, there's a shrunken head with half of its face torn apart. I see fragments of the skull around the head and on the floor. I probably broke the skin and skull when I stabbed it the first time, but even that wasn't the scariest part. The scariest part was that the head looked fresh, almost alive. The skin of its cheeks was rosy as if there were blood running behind them. I can't see the eyes because they were sewn shut with iron threads. The lips were also sewn in a grotesque smile that's probably supposed to look peaceful, but since I tore half of it by trying to open the pumpkin, it doesn't look like that at all. There's a piece of lip dangling on its chin, and I could see blackened gums below far too white teeth. I could also see the bones and muscles in the cheeks on the side my knife scraped. The head is laying on the floor of my kitchen, and I'm frozen in my spot, disgusted, fascinated, and terrified. I finally get my senses back and call the cops, and then my mom, and decide to wait outside on the balcony. Not only because the smell is awful, but because I know I shouldn't be touching anything. Every time I blink, I see that person's head and its expression, carved by my own knife. I wasn't hitting an abnormally big pumpkin seed. I was breaking into a human head.